For this online edition of Art Basel 2020, Alexander Gray Associates presents a selection of recent sculptures and works on paper by the interdisciplinary Cuban artist Ricardo Gray. Titled To Sail Forbidden Seas, the gallery's digital presentation adapts its name from Gray's 2019 condensed multimedia installation, I Love to Sail Forbidden Seas and Land in Barbarian Coasts. Part of the ongoing Every Life is a Fire series, the work juxtaposes disparate materials, ideas, and histories, literally and metaphorically encapsulating many of Gray's artistic aims. Exploring the texts, myths, flora, and fauna of the new and the old world, delineating humankind's origins, this and other works by the artist speak to his transnational identity. Born in Havana, Cuba in 1955, Gray grew up during the Cuban Revolution. After graduating from art school, he joined the dynamic artistic scene in Havana that included Cuban and international artists who were committed to advancing artistic practice in Cuba, including those Bray formed close relationships with, like Ana Mendieta, Jose Badia Valdez, and Juan Francisco Elso. Bray worked briefly as an illustrator and graphic designer before exhibiting in the landmark 1981 group show, Volumen 1, at the Centro de Arte Internacional in Havana a show that brought him widespread critical attention and ultimately provided him with the opportunity to travel and exhibit internationally while connecting with artists like Luis Chemnitzer and Jimmy Durham. In 1992, at the invitation of Belgian curator Jan Hut, Bray participated in Documenta 9 and was the first Cuban artist to do so. In 2015, Bray's inclusion in the Venice Biennale, All the World's Futures, curated by Aquin Wazer, provide an international platform for exhibiting works from Every Life is a Fire. Suggesting a history of colonialism, the conquistadors claiming of Latin America, for example, I Love to Sail Forbidden Seas and Land in Barbarian Coasts opens to present a tiny empire that culminates in a coronet. Inviting narratives around exploration and exploitation, the lavish box is replete with reflective gold surfaces that recall the looted wealth of Mesoamerica. The work is anchored by a rock, barely visible under a tangle of chains and coins, which rests on a stack of folios filled with carefully rendered ink drawings. A visually cacophonous treasure trove of disparate objects and images, each with their own meaning, the piece encourages performative engagement from viewers. Designed to be opened and unfolded in a systematic, almost ritualized way, it charges its mundane components with the near sacredness of reliquaries. At the same time, taking its title from a quote from Herman Melville's Moby Dick, one of Bray's favorite childhood books, the work seeks to invert the history of colonialist appropriation through its construction. As a black Caribbean artist who traveled from the new world to the old, Bray freely adapts European culture to create a personal artistic empire, building in his words, his own Afro-Cuban cathedral. Ultimately for Bray, however, I Love to Sail Forbidden Seas and Land in Barbarian Coasts is about the feeling of thinking. Pointing to the crown, which alludes to a missing head, he explains that the ornate display with its countless compartments, sketchbooks, and obscured materials represents the vast unknowable intricacies of the human mind. Admission boasts luminous blue morpho butterflies whose brilliant bodies rest within a glass vitrine. Native to Latin America, these incredible creatures populate rainforests and appear in Aztec and Mayan myths as theriomorphic beings. They are presented in admission as relics fall in mid-flight. Surrounded by a grid of personal souvenirs collected by the artist over many years that represent both memories and fantasies, their bodies contribute to a tableau that updates Victorian natural displays which catalogued and preserved observed reality as a way of exerting dominion over it. Described by the artist as a shrine to blue, it creates a reverent, open-ended space for contemplation intended to give viewers the feeling of hope and of the future. Banyo de Povo, or Dust Bath, features a flock of clay birds whose forms are the sole remains of a larger 2017 installation, Dust Bathing which Bray created for the Kathmandu Triennial in Nepal. Recalling this earlier piece, the box playfully inverts the idea of birds rolling in earth by creating them from the very substance they coat themselves in. Like other works in this series, Banyo de Povo celebrates interiority, 
contrasting its staid exterior with its lavish insides, which, like a self-contained universe, are populated by countless creatures. This dichotomy ultimately engages with concepts of internality, posing metaphysical questions to viewers about the nature of being and constructing in Bray's words, a hermeneutics of the soul. In recent drawings, Bray adopts a blue palette, a departure from the earth-colored ochres and rusty reds of previous works on paper. While a departure in hue, these new images belong to the large ongoing body of adrift works that the artist began in 2014. Foggy draws its inspiration from the natural world. The evocative image with its fragment of text recalls the artist's assertion that the series comes from fragments that float in his memory and images that have no place in the rigid parameters of previous work. Featuring a slash of deep, concentrated Parisian blue, the work boasts spreading tendrils of pigment that conjure the atmospheric condition after which it is titled. The creeping nature of fog is further underscored by the delicately drawn rhizome-like tangle of budding tree branches whose limbs spread ever outward beneath thin washes of color. Blue shade boasts an almost obscured, delicate sketch of a plant whose rhizome-like branches suggest endless expansion outwards. Frey frequently incorporates rhizomatic forms into his work, indicative of his rhizomatic understanding of dualistic concepts like life and death, good and evil, and so on. The continually growing plant signifies his embrace of multiplicity and the non-hierarchical. Bray began this sprawling series of drawings in part as a way of processing the immense horror he felt when he returned to his native Cuba after more than 20 years to discover widespread deforestation. This horror is made more explicit in drawings like Poison Tree, whose title reflects the artist's personal concerns about humankind's harmful relationship with the environment. Featuring collage text reading Tree, and a mass of branches partially obscured by deep stains of Parisian blue pigment, the work constructs a ghostly interpretation of a tree whose denuded form warns of climate peril. Gloves Thistle builds on other thistle images constructed by Bray, who has said that he identifies with the plant, treating it almost as a personal avatar. Incredibly hardy and adaptable, the plant takes root in both the Americas and Europe, flourishing in a plethora of different surroundings, and even in suboptimal conditions. Bray's sculptural works reflect his decades-long engagement with assemblage and found materials. After leaving Cuba in 1990, at the beginning of the nation's special period, a time marked by severe economic deprivation, Bray settled in Ghent, Belgium. In stark contrast to Cuba, where objects were continually recycled and repurposed due to their scarcity, he was shocked to discover an endless trove of discarded objects. Continuing to use cast-off and salvaged items in his practice to this day, Bray's interest in found materials is influenced by his belief that all things have individual identities and souls. Weaving Hope features a black globe caught in a beaded net of faux jet gemstones. Speaking to Bray's own concerns and hopes for the future, the shroud-like meshwork recalls morning beads, yet is a sign of optimism. Its woven jet embrace armor against future harm. For millennia, in predominantly Catholic countries, jet has been used to protect against the evil eye. In some places like Cuba, it's even common to give newborn babies pieces of jet to ward them from injury. As a result, by constructing netting from the stones, Bray seeks to bless the planet weaving a talisman of hope for every nation. In Light Up, Bray juxtaposes a found bicycle wheel, bent and slightly rusted from its exposure to the elements, with an ornate Baroque-style architectural element, various decorative round beads, and spherical ornaments made of wooden metal. Partially suspended and threaded through the spokes of the wheel, the beads symbolically function as planets suggesting the cosmos, complete with distinct yet connected celestial bodies, light up confirms humanity's insignificance within the vastness of the universe. In its sleep belongs to a larger, looser body of adrift sculptures that adapt aspects of Gothic cathedrals. As a longtime resident of Ghent, Bray has become used to the soaring architecture of these structures, which dot the landscape 
and are part of his daily life in the city. Paying tribute to them, the sculpture is a dirge for Notre Dame. The work's blackened supports recall the beams of the cathedrals that burned on April 15, 2019. Reinforcing this connection, the bandaged join of the sculpture suggests a wound and an absence, as though part of the cathedral, its gargoyle, has been wrenched away. Recontextualizing prosaic objects, his works make space for reflections on humanity's identities and place in the world. As he once wrote, I refuse to limit my work to a specific subject or to the expression of a specific reality. I create into my work spaces of interaction in which I link elements that at first seem to be opposite, but in reality are indissolubly connected. Nature, culture, organic and organic, Western, non-Western, my goal is to transmit, with my sculptures and installations, this hybrid nature, always sailing forbidden seas, or rather uncharted conceptual seas. Bray's practice navigates transcultural, even transcontinental dialogues in order to challenge and surmount divisions between myth, religion, and systems of thought and value.